let's go to Mark. Mark's going to be uh, the quintessential high school football guy, right? So he's going to be in high school football. And like I did, I was like, my dad's in the stands. So I want to make my dad proud. So guess what I did? I ran as fast as I possibly could on special teams. And I was going to destroy another human being. So how did I do that? I brought my head where? Down and rammed it into him, right? So, uh, and then guess what? Maybe he's going to ride uh, dirt bikes or whatever else. And maybe uh, it wasn't his fault, but he's sitting at a red light one day. And he's looking in the rearview mirror. And someone goes, bam, and hits him from behind. Got it? Now, he's a big, strong guy, and nothing's going to happen to him, right? He's going to be sore for a couple days. But over the course of the next probably 5, 10, 15 years, that ligament stretch, almost like a sprained ankle, under gravity, unlike an ankle, is going to start putting an angle in his neck like this. Got it? No decreased range of motion. He has no pain. Don't feel sorry for him. He doesn't hurt at all, right? Uh, So he's just going to have a little bit of curve right there. And we're just going to leave that there. So, and you have to face everybody, which is pretty crazy. I'm so sorry. (laughs) <laughs> so, but Mark, now watch this. So I said, Mark had a big angle right here. And I'm not, Mark said, I could tell you. So, or, or, uh, so you look at this. Mark had a big angle probably for some trauma a long time ago, right? Now his neck was a little stiff, but he didn't come to me because he had a stiff neck. He came in because he's got an angle right here. And where does this go? So if I just looked at your body, what, what organs do you think come from this area? Heart and lungs. So what was happening before you came to see me? Severe atrial fibrillation. So he had heart. severe atrial fib. So his heart rate was going off the chart. It was just, it was vibrating and not beating. 200, 205, 210 beats a minute. Great. So he went in, got checked because Con- that's consist- what we're taught to consistently do. Consistently. Yeah. Stop. Yeah. And, his, and your blood pressure? Through the roof. Yeah. So 200 over 120. 205 or over 175. 175. Right. So yeah. So now watch. So what did they want to do for him? They want to try and control all those pathways instead of working with those pathways, right? And then they told you that you needed a procedure. What was that? Well, uh, the first time they tried to control it medically. The second time um, I was at the emergency room, they said, look, this is not working. We're going to really go real hard with the uh, chemicals. And that didn't work. I did like a 12-hour stint to that. And it was the cardio where they put you to sleep and hit you with the paddles to get it back in the sinus rhythm. Yeah, so then, then they told you, that I had severe mitral prolapse and uh, that they wanted to go in and basically fry the top part of the heart, the pathways, um, and uh, basically cut the nerve endings going down into the heart that cause it. To, but, so the doctor is literally yeah. saying, hey, there's a nerve problem to your heart. So what we're going to do is cut the nerves to the heart. Yeah. Is this me? So then they said that you had, they were going to do like a pig valve or something? Yeah, yeah. On the severe mitral prolapse, when the doctor was listening to it, the flap wasn't closing all the way. Of course, it's not going to be closing all the way if you're doing 200 plus beats a minute and the, the blood is not going all the way through. So it's backing up inside there and it's causing a, you know, it's not going to seat properly. Yeah, so he comes in. He's told he needs a pig valve. That's scientific. Pig valve, a pacemaker, I think, right? A pacemaker. Yeah, at and then point, basically what happened is is that they cardioverted me on, let's say, a, on a Thursday. I left Friday the hospital, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I'm on my way back over to another cardiologist to get a second opinion. My heart goes back into AFib. So I walk into that office, brand new cardi- you know, cardiologist. My heart is back at 178 to 180 beats a minute. Blood pressure starting to go up while I'm in their office. And on the way back, I just said to my wife, I said, you know what, Um, this guy mentioned something about compressed my spine because I had been in three or four months earlier. And he he did an evaluation. And uh, I, again, I was feeling pretty good, so I didn't really take it as serious as I should have. Guests, if you feel pretty good, is there still reason to get checked? Right. So we made a beeline from the cardiologist's office to Dr. Herb's office. I got my first adjustment. The second day, I got another adjustment. The third adjustment was on a Friday, and my heart went back into sinus rhythm that afternoon. Amen. Is that awesome? Right? And it's, and it's been straight ever since. Now, blood pressure has been starting to come back down. I just saw that cardiologist, the first one that cardioverted me. Um, blood pressure was 136 over, let's say, 76. Um, I still am on some medication, but he backed me way off the medication. And... Uh, Needless to say, we're getting it straightened out. How many so, how many pig parts do you have in you? None. Yeah, I like that too. Hey, so so big a big round of applause for that first of all. Got it? You're awesome, dude. 